Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Mess. So, Tarek in our continuing series, is that an analog in your pocket? Or are you just happy to see me? All right, go over the analog pocket emulators under OpenFPJ, show you how to set them up, go through all the diverse settings, and make sure you guys are having fun with your new pocket purchases. And if you can't already tell, today we're going to be going over the Nintendo Entertainment System as well as the Famicom Disk System because the core does utilize both of those media formats. And if you can't tell, I have them in front of me right now. Before we get too far involved though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like and subscribe and ring that notification bell, definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. But obviously the Nintendo Entertainment System is one of the most classic 8-bit consoles of all time, and the Analog Pocket does an amazing job of running it via the ported FPGA cores from Mister. So you'll see we have a bunch of zip files here dumped from games that I own, and we're going to end up having two different file formats once we unzip everything. That is because this core works for both NES or Famicom as well as the Famicom disk system. Some games back in the day in Japan only came on those floppy disks, and the core does support that so go ahead and unzip the games you own and then we'll go ahead and just delete those zips because we're not going to be putting them over to our analog pocket micro sd card from there we're going to talk about that discsys.rom file because unlike the nes and famicom the famicom disk system does have a small bios file that we're going to need to get over to the pocket so you can play those disk system games and like i said we both had cartridges as well as discs on the famicom disk system and it is great that the core incorporates both of those because there's a lot of great games on the fds and some of them are going to be exclusive some people have modified them just to run on cartridges and if you follow this tutorial correctly, you're going to have both formats of the NES running on your analog pocket, and that's absolutely what we want to have here. But there's a little bit of a caveat on that disys.rom file. If you obtain it via other means, you're going to see it comes through with this name. You need to rename it to fds.bios for the analog pocket NES core to understand it. Windows is going to ask you if you want to change that file extension. Go ahead and hit yes. Absolutely nothing bad is going to happen. But you need to rename the file to fds.bios or else the NES core is never going to actually see it and you're going to have an absolutely bad time dealing with FDS games. But now that we have absolutely everything we need, we're going to go ahead and hit copy. We'll move over to wherever that micro SD card is. You'll see all of the different folders. We go under assets here. And if for any reason you don't have the folders, I do have a setup guide tutorial so you can use Pocket Updater to get this all lined up for you. This is not going to be something that the analog pocket auto populates when you put that SD card in. You do need to select an updater. So if you need that, the link is in the description below. But once we actually get to the assets folder, there is no folder for Famicom Disk System. It's not Famicom Disk System, not FDS. Absolutely everything is going to go in the NES folder under COM. And you're going to see we have two cores for the Famicom Disk System. We'll talk about that in just a moment. And because I already have done some testing, they do have that BIOS file already there. If it's there for you, awesome, because you ran updater. If it's not, you've added it in right there. I'll just go ahead and skip that file because we don't need it anymore. But now you'll see we have all of the files we want to try to test and play, the .fds file, the .nes files, and all of the different BIOS things we need. So if we actually go into OpenFPGA and pick a game, we should have it just booting up, no big deal whatsoever. The screen does flash black, but then you were into an NES title, obviously in this instance, Super Mario Bros. 3. And it's great to see that running on the pocket. And as we run around here, everything just seems to be working perfectly fine. You do have some really fun options within the core settings though. We'll go over the controls first and you're going to see that there's an insert disk and insert coin option. That is because you can use arcade ROMs for this as well as the Famicom disk system. So be aware that those are mapped to the two shoulder buttons. By default, all the controls seem amazing, but you can change them. But my favorite part right now is the palette folder. We can change the look and feel of the NES games because we do have those palettes. Now there's three in there by default but you can certainly find more out there in the wild. You just add them to that palettes folder. This gives you a different way to have a different look for games that you're familiar with and really kind of dial in everything else you might want to do. When I take a look at the right hand side of the screen here, you're gonna see that something pops up, those little green blocks, the sprites at the corner. That is because of the way the Nintendo Entertainment System hardware works. We have an overscan option, which is going to expand the screen size, and it's going to cover some of that pop-in, but it's also going to end up taking a little bit of the screen real estate off. So you get to decide whether or not you want to use overscan or not. For me, I leave it off because I like seeing exactly the image that I would expect to see, but get to know that you do have the option to be able to do that. 
Take a look at the top of Mega Man here. Watch in the background. We have all of those blocks up there on the ceiling. If we do overscan on, all of a sudden some of them are going to go away. So this is actually taking away art from the screen. This is with overscan on. See that little red block at the very top? If we take overscan off, now go back into the game. There are more graphics at the top. So you can do whatever you want with overscan, but I want you to be aware that it does exist. I prefer to leave it off, but your mileage may vary. Game to game dependent, you pick what works well for you. And do be aware that there's more than one core for the NES. If we go down to change core, we have the spiritualized core, as well as the core from AG23 ported over from Mister. You can play around with both versions. You're gonna see basically similar results though. But if we want to load up into a new game, something like the Famicom Disk System, go ahead and select the FDS file right here. You're going to see that it's going to automatically load the floppy disk and you're going to be off to the races. But some games use both sides of the floppy disk. So if you do need to change the disk, it's gonna give you that option in the game. That's why we have the controls for Famicom Disk System as far as inserting a disk. But playing around with Famicom Disk System is a ton of fun, but it always does seem to trip a lot of people up because it's a completely different format and it does require a different understanding of how the hardware works. But it is awesome that we have Famicom Disk System support as well because there are a ton of good exclusives. And like I said just a moment ago, if you need to insert a disc, that's going to be on the right hand shoulder button for that disc swapping. But you can play around with all the controls however you want. But definitely start reading about Famicom Disk System games if you never have. They are totally fun. Now as far as other options, we have 16 sprites per line which will remove a little bit of flicker. We have a FDS mode which you should leave as auto. That way it's going to detect it and you'll be off to the races playing these games. But again, if we go into the settings, you're going to see here 16 sprites per line. That should reduce some of the flicker down when you're actually playing games. But I want you to listen to the audio quality of this core because I think it's absolutely spectacular. Go ahead and listen for like 35 seconds or so and I'll come back and show you more settings you want to use on the NES core. <laughs> Sounds absolutely spectacular, but let's talk about how this actually plays in your hand or when you're playing via captures. Mike Tyson's Punch-Out right here, one of the best games on the NES in my opinion. If you have lag in the controls, it becomes a very difficult experience to play, especially in later levels. Obviously Glass Joe here is not much of a challenge, but if there is lag in the controls, you're not going to be able to dodge and open up those weaknesses for him. Like right here, I can block, I can dodge, everything's working as expected. So at least if you're playing in handheld mode, you're going to be able to complete any game you want lag is not going to be an issue and the great part is even though this is set up as like a Game Boy Game Boy Color format the button structure really does work well obviously the buttons are in a line they're at a diagonal compared to the original hardware but with a moderately decent d-pad and enough buttons to play NES and Famicom Disk System games you should be totally fine handheld mode and of course if you want to go dock there is a plethora of controller options I'll leave a link to my controller guide below you can pick pretty much anything you want and as long as there isn't too much lag in the wireless department you'll be totally fine but honestly for me I've been using a ton of the TurboGrafx 16 controller from 8-bit do because I do love that those two buttons are in a row just like they would be on an original NES or Famicom but honestly it's just so fun to play NES on the go in FPGA it's one of those classic consoles of all time everyone's played it everyone knows it but when you're playing an analog pocket it is a really special feeling to be able to take an FPGA device with you on the go and play NES wherever you want just don't forget warp whistles are a thing can't recommend them enough but that is my tutorial for the NES and Famicom Disk System on the Analog Pocket. If you run into any problems or have any questions, leave them down below and I'd be happy to help. And if there's a tutorial I have not done yet, leave me a comment down below and tell me what you want to see next. Because I do use your guys' feedback when I start thinking about making videos. But NES on the Analog Pocket, 10 out of 10, absolutely spectacular and I love it. Short of that, so thanks so much for watching guys. I'm going to go play some NES myself and I will see you next time for the next tutorial. Have a good one. Bye bye.